record this event. So I just hit the record. So, so anyways, it's seven o'clock. Oh, it says Don Keller is here. Um, let me just uh, promote Don and then we'll get going. Let's see, Don, um, could you uh, put, put another text message in there? And I, I, I did, did, did you come in under Don? Because I don't see you in the panelists or in the attendees. Um, anyways, I'll, we'll, 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 we'll promote you and get you on. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll get started now. My, my name is Mar Martin Desmond. I'm a moderator for this event, and I want to thank all the panelists and uh, the attendees for showing up today. Uh, we have uh, 18 candidates that have confirmed for this event. This is at the state and local uh, local levels, and uh, so because we have so many candidates, we're going to be moving pretty quickly, and each candidate has five minutes of fame, and and then, uh, and then, and then, then their microphone will be muted. Just, just a few uh, notes for the audience. Uh, um, most of you are probably pretty familiar with Zoom at this point in time. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, you know, you can post them in the chat section, or you can post them in the Q and A. And this is a family-friendly event, so you know, just please be polite and uh, courteous. And obviously, anything about pornographic or threats of violence, whatever, you know, I'm just going to boot you off uh, the platform right away. As I mentioned, you know, this this event is being recorded. We'll we'll post this up onto YouTube in a couple of days. And so, so we we have a number of questions that we sent to the candidates, and it's for them to consider addressing. You know. In, in five minutes, they can't go through all of them, but uh, we'll, we'll at least hopefully they'll be able to address some of them. And I, I just want to briefly read a number of them. Uh, what are your four top priorities for addressing climate change issues at the local level? How would you proceed? What plans should we make to manage the catastrophic change we are experiencing? Second question, over 1 million acres of wildfires seared the state of Oregon in September. The Echo Mountain Fire burned approximately 2,500 acres and require the evacuation of Otis and parts of Lincoln City. What should the federal state and governments be doing to address wildfires? Three, what do you see as the most pressing environmental issue facing your local community? Fourth, uh, several local groups have developed the Lincoln County Climate Action Plan, which envisions a goal for the county to become carbon neutral by the year 2035. Would you support an initiative for the citizens of Lincoln County to vote on a refer re referendum to become carbon neutral by 2035? What should the cities, counties, and private industry do to create more green jobs? Uh, since China is no longer accepting recycling from the United States, what should local governments do to address waste stream management? And the southern part of Lincoln County has only four buses per day, which is not sufficient to help the working poor. What can be done to improve public transportation for the working poor? So anyways, we, we don't expect the candidates to go through all those questions, though, but we wanted to uh, at, at least have those there. And so, so anyway, so so the, the way we're going to go about it, we're going to start first out with the House District 10, uh, State Representative uh, Dave Gomberg and Max Sherman. Uh, that then we're actually going to go skip ahead to the Lincoln County Commissioner, then uh, that, that then go to the State Senate seat, and then um, and then we'll go through the Newport uh, Mayoral and City Councils, then uh, the. Uh, uh, Yahats and then the Walport and the Toledo. Well, I actually, yeah, okay. So, anyways, that that's the 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 the, the format. And uh, so, so anyways, the first up is, uh, and so if all of uh, the folks can uh, mute themselves, except for Representative Dave Gomberg, and he's going to be up first. And uh, when Representative Gomberg participated in our candidates forum last uh, spring. You know, I, I wasn't really paying attention to the, to the clock too much. And, you know, each of the candidates had six minutes. And so, so after a while, I just sort of put up my two fingers and Representative Gomberg uh, abruptly stopped and said, hey, Martin, I got three minutes left to go. So this time I, I have my uh, smartphone with my uh, 
with my stopwatch. So, so Representative Gomberg, if you want to, we, we can uh, synchronize our uh, uh, stopwatches and I'll give you five minutes and the time is all yours now. Well, thank you so very much, Martin. I think everybody else is breathing a sigh of relief um, since they're not going first. I'm David Gomberg running for re-election to the Oregon House of Representatives. I hope it's clear to everyone listening that I am the pro-environment candidate in this race. And I say that because I've got my 100% voting record from the Oregon Environmental Council and I have been endorsed for re-election by the League of Conservation Voters. Now I understand that not everybody listening is gonna be happy with all of that. So let me talk a little bit about how you go to Salem and how these things work. And, and I'm gonna use cap and trade as an example because it was clear from the beginning that cap and trade last session had the votes to pass if it was going to be voted on. And so immediately I went to work on, on pursuing amendments. We, don't, uh, we drive more here at the coast than they do in the city. So I pushed for amendments that were gonna actually give cash rebates to rural Oregonians for their extra driving expenses. I pushed to make sure that the money that cap and trade uh, generated was going to be spent improving our, uh, our dikes and levees at the coast and improving our transportation network. And then finally, I did something that shouldn't be controversial, but was, and that is I said, I think we should take the emergency clause off this bill so that Oregonians can collect signatures and vote on it if that's what they want to do, because I trust Oregonians. Now, the Portland leadership wasn't very happy with that. They actually uh, removed me as chair of the, uh, the committee that I was on at the time. So I got some scars for, uh, for taking those hard stands, but it was the right thing to do because I trust Oregonians. Now, cap and trade ultimately didn't come up for a vote because about a third of the senators and a third of the House members literally left the building. They walked away. Um, whether it's Democrats or Republicans, I don't believe a walkout is the right way to deal with any kind of issue. I believe that we continue to talk, we continue to negotiate, we continue to compromise, looking for solutions that are going to benefit all Oregonians rather than just some Oregonians. So I wanna to say to you now that, that I don't support the walkouts and I am not going to be walking out. I'm gonna stay and do my job. And I hope other candidates can say the same thing if they are faced with the same kinds of choices. I trust Oregonians and I hope that they will trust me to go back to Salem, to work to make sure that we have clean oceans, clean beaches, clean streams and fields and hillsides, clean water, and more resilient, healthy, and environmentally sound communities. Those are the issues that I'm running on, Martin, and that's the reason I wanted to come here tonight to talk about those kinds of concerns. So ballots are gonna be arriving this coming week. I hope people fill them out very quickly, return them promptly, and get them into the system so that they can be counted. And I'm sure everybody knows that if they have any specific questions about these or any other kinds of issues, that they can reach out to me. My webpage is electgomberg.com. And at this point, Martin, I'm gonna cede back the two minutes that I swiped from you at the last uh, um, uh, forum and uh, be happy to hear from the other candidates tonight. Ah, well, well, actually, Representative Gomberg, you still have a minute and a half, but, but anyways, if you want to cede that, that's, uh, anyways, appreciate it, so. So anyways, uh, Max, uh, you're, you're up next. Do uh, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? And uh, i going to turn it over to you now, Max. And I'll uh, actually let me, I got to make sure I do these things so that everyone gets five minutes. OK, all set, Max? Great. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Uh, I'm Max Sherman, and I'm running for uh, House District 10. And I'd like to thank you for this opportunity this evening to just uh, to share a few of my thoughts. Uh, we face some challenges, uh, especially we start uh, looking at climate change uh, and we have some issues that I think if we work together, we can, we can solve. Uh, many of you may know I am a member of Timber Unity and uh, I was, uh, had the opportunity last Monday to uh, be at the meeting between Timber Unity and the 350 uh, Oregon Coast Group. I uh, was real excited to see uh, the two groups coming together. And uh, I believe when we sit down and talk, that's when we can actually uh, you know, make some changes that, that we can all uh, be happy with. 
I think all of us have the same goal, a healthy planet and a viable, viable economy for our community. We may have some differences in how we uh, hope to accomplish that, but by sitting down and working together, I believe we can uh, you know, come to some consensus uh, that's gonna benefit our community and our state. I've had the opportunity to read the uh, Lincoln County Climate Plan, and I really appreciate the uh, thought that went into it and the thoroughness of the plan. Um, you know, a little bit about myself. I taught high school agriculture for 35 years. And as an ag teacher, uh, there's uh, literally 50 or 75 different competition students can get involved in. And as a leader, my job was to uh, help the students narrow their focus. And we'd start out by concentrating on two or three uh, that we could be successful on and then move on. And I believe that's the approach we need to take with uh, the issues facing our community uh, and take a look at a few things where we can uh, have some consensus and have some success uh, towards making some change. Uh, 2020's development has given us uh, some interesting twists. First and foremost, I think we need to address the massive carbon releases that are happening, happening by the, the fires we're having year after year. Um, we need to work aggressively to get our forests healthy. We have uh, enough challenges with man's activities and we don't need to compound that by uh, uh, massive fires year after year. We need to aggressively salvage the trees that have been killed by these fires in order to prevent a second massive carbon release. Uh, we need to harvest those trees uh, and get that carbon uh, locked up. And then we need to replant as quickly as possible so we can get uh, trees growing and helping to sequester carbon because that, that's also part of the solution. Um, I hope everybody may will take some time and look up Timber Unity's four point plan. I think it's a, uh, it has some good issues we can uh, bring to the table and talk about. Uh, three of the four I believe can be implemented very quickly. Uh, you know, development of uh, and executing right of way carbon sink plans, which communities can get involved in, local schools, natural resource departments can actually help determine plants that would be uh, beneficial to uh, sequester carbon along uh, roadways in their own communities. We need to reduce public road miles through public procurement and asset management. Uh, we need to get our uh, county and state governments to look at buying local. Uh, you know, and that's something I think all of us can buy into even in our personal use. Uh, we need to look at accelerating uh, depreciation for fleets uh, and businesses uh, so they can uh, phase out older vehicles and bring in uh, new vehicles that are more economically friendly and even carbon neutral. Uh, the fourth part of the plan is to invest in recycling infrastructure uh, and uh, has a, a number of benefits in reducing carbon. And it also has the benefits of uh, potentially bringing industry and jobs to the area, which is something we need to take a look at. The fires have devastated entire communities and legislators need to uh, make certain individuals can quickly get back in and rebuild, removing as many barriers as possible. In Lincoln County in particular, much of the area burned was affordable housing, which is already in serious uh, short supply. Uh, assistance is needed and streamlining is needed for the permitting process uh, to uh, help get people back into homes. We need to uh, look possibly at, you know, uh, our land use and, and where we're building. Uh, we need a balanced approach to our management of our forest, which includes wildlife areas, recreation, uh, and sustainable harvest. Uh, we need to work hard to try and maintain a healthy forest for uh, the benefit of all Oregonians. And I think the fires have emphasized the failure of our state to effectively, effectively manage our forest. This has been largely due in part to special interest groups that have blocked reasonable management practices. We need to let the professionals uh, make the decisions uh, to, uh, to manage our forest. And you know, looking at the Lincoln County Climate, Contr Climate Plan, it also, I think, is a valuable resource in, in some of the... Uh, things that it brings up with uh, replanting and especially adding diversity back to our forest. So I think we have some issues that we can all uh, agree on and come together with. Uh, I look forward to uh, being part of, part of it and uh, thank you very much. Yep, thank you, Max. Okay, next up, uh, uh, because Melissa Cribbins is having to drive her son home, we're, we're gonna switch over to uh, the Lincoln County Commissioner race and uh, I, I received a call from Commissioner Hall about an hour and a half ago, and she she was over at the emergency room, and uh, it's uh, and I don't want to disclose the reason for the medical, but uh, it's it's not a life or death situation. But anyway, so she she she's not going to be able to uh, participate in the event tonight. But we we do have her challenger, uh, Joe Hitzelberger, and Joe. I'll turn this. Actually, let me. 
Okay, I'll, I'll, I gotta keep gotta keep remembering to turn on my stopwatch. So, anyways, I'm gonna turn this over to you now, Joe. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, I first want to say I really appreciate being invited to this. It's been uh, an interesting campaign season, and you can't really get out and and uh, you know meet with folks uh, as you would normally. Um, so these online events are great to kind of uh, get the word out and 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 uh, see everybody else running for uh, for offices as well. Uh, my name is Joe Hitzelberger. I'm running for Lincoln County Commissioner. Uh, just kind of the the real beef brief uh, background on me is um, I am a uh, former forester and biologist. I've spent much of my life living and working in Lincoln County. Uh, currently, I am a small business owner. Uh, my wife and I own a business just south of Newport, and um, I'm a wildland firefighter. Uh, I did review a lot of the questions you sent, and I'd like to touch on a few of those. Uh, one of those being, you know, county specific uh, is the Echo Mountain complex fire uh, and what the county can do to uh, work on that fire and, and potential fires in the future. Um, I was on that fire. Uh, I spent a couple weeks on that fire and I saw the devastation firsthand. Um, I think this is a this is a really good opportunity for us to identify gaps in our emergency management. Um, I think we had some successes, but also some failures in the evacuation of North Lincoln County. And, um, you know, I think this was a wake up call, especially if we are hit with another much larger catastrophic disaster, uh, we, are, we are very susceptible be, to be isolated in Lincoln County. And I, I think we really need to spend some more time looking into that. Uh, the other part that the county can do right now is for for future wildland fire response is to really help bring this on, uh, into the forefront as far as um, conducting outreach and 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 getting this ingrained in our culture here on the coast. Uh, you know, growing up on the coast, wildfires were never something I thought about, but I'm sure that's different if you grew up in central or east Oregon. That's 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 ingrained in people that that can happen. And now we're seeing this happen here on the coast and we need to make sure people are aware of that. I also think it's very, very important to work different strategies into our planning department as far as creating uh, firewise communities. Uh, I can tell you that a big problem in Echo Mountain was the accessibility for emergency equipment. And these these developments weren't planned to be firewise communities. And I think we really need to consider doing that as far as putting code and, and making defensible space, making sure there's, there's more than one entrance and exit to a community, uh, making sure there's, there's, you know, the ability for these engines to get in and out of a, uh, of a, a, a development is is critical. And I don't think we've thought about that enough. Um, to speak to some of the climate questions, I spent much of my career as a biologist. I worked on some very, very contentious issues. Um, I was a fisheries biologist, and so I dealt a lot with anadromous fish, uh, something we have a lot of here on the coast. And part of my job was to bring different stakeholders to the table. And, and try to get everybody on the same page and find a solution. Uh, the, the, the things that we need to do here in Lincoln County, and as, as a county commissioner, number one, what I would prioritize is really recognizing that there is a problem, and that's critical. I think we've done that with the Lincoln County Climate Change Partnership. Uh, we need to identify stakeholders and bring them to the table. Timber unity is not the voice of timber landowners in Lincoln County. We need to reach out to the Farm Bureau. We need to talk to the Small Woodlands Association. Uh, we need to bring these people to the table and figure things out. Number two is we need to put our money where our mouth is if we're the county. We need to make sure we're more efficient and we're greener. We need to make a, we need to have a green fleet of vehicles. We need to have green building practices and county property. Uh, we need to 
have have green uh, uh, new construction and our existing construction. Uh, we also could do simple things right now, improving fish passage on county road uh, stream crossings, um, paving bridge approaches so that they don't uh, leach sediment into, into fish bearing streams. These are all things that could be done right now that aren't being done. And I would propose to do that. Okay, thanks, Joe. Appreciate uh... I appreciate. Uh, uh, okay, so so actually, it looks like Melissa is back at her house. So uh, so Melissa, do you want to come on line with? Okay, so uh, actually, let, let me. I'm trying to make sure we everyone gets their five minutes. So are you all set to go, Melissa? I am ready when you are, Martin. Thank okay. you. I'm gonna hit the button. Time is all yours. All right. Thanks. Um, I never thought I would still be in my laundry room six months later. I think this is exactly where I was the last time we did one of these forums. So I am Melissa Cribbins. Um, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. I'm running for Senate District 5. And I really appreciate all the effort that goes into putting one of these forums together. I know that it's not easy, um, but I think it is really important that we give the voters as much information as we can when they're making these hard choices um, during the election. And I appreciate any opportunity I've got to talk to voters. So thank you so much. I have, I've been a Coos County Commissioner for almost eight years now. Before I was a commissioner, I was an attorney and I worked as in-house counsel for the Cocoa Indian tribe for about six years before I got elected. Before that though, I was actually a microbiologist and a biochemist before I went to law school. My undergrad degrees are from Portland State University in microbiology and biochemistry. And I worked for first for a company that was a NASA subcontractor that did the air and water purification system for the space shuttle. And then after that, I worked in the drinking water industry and I um, worked for Eugene Water and Electric and um, the city of Spokane providing clean, safe drinking water for the citizens of both of those communities. And I learned a lot about drinking water through that process, um, both very different systems, but both critical to you know, providing for the health of a community, but also for providing for the economic development of a community. I don't know that we think about that enough but frankly, from that perspective, you know, a community can't grow, you can't attract jobs, um, you can't have a good standard of living if you don't have those basics, like clean drinking water, clean air. Um, it's not a luxury, it's something that we need to provide for our citizens to make sure that we have the basics that are needed to allow our communities to grow. So as a water quality professional, um, I realized that there's a lot of drinking water policy that's influenced you know, by the law and by politicians nationwide. And so when I decided to go to law school, I thought I would focus on water law. Best laid plans, all that is not how life turned out for me. And I ended up working, like I said, for the Cocoa Indian tribe. And then when I saw that, in my opinion, um, the Coos County Commissioners were having a lot of difficulty getting along. I thought that I could add some value to that relationship. And so I ran for commissioner. And I am proud to say that, you know, we get along most of the time now. I don't think any board of commissioners would argue with you that they get along all the time. But getting along most of the time is good enough for me most days. As a commissioner, I have worked on a variety of environmental groups and issues, including I'm the chair of the Energy Trust of Oregon, where we focus on renewables and conservation. Um, and I read the, the uh, Climate Action Plan for Lincoln County. I think it's tremendous. I think it dovetails well with some of the work that we do there, which is focusing on the technology that's necessary in order to get us to carbon zero. Uh, and, you know, really, we all know that, that the technology is going to be a critical aspect in getting us there. I'm also the Energy, Environment, and Land Use Chair for the National Association of Counties. Um, and I serve on the EPA's Local Government Advisory Air Quality Subcommittee. I'm also one of the members of the Elliott State Forest Advisory Committee. And I'm also running my own timer, Martin, so you don't have to yell at me. Um, 
but I think that's a great model for how we can meet multiple objectives. On so many of these environmental issues, you know, we have different people coming to the table. Everyone really has the same goal. You know, we all want livable communities where people can experience a good quality of life, um, clean drinking water, you know, healthy babies, um, all of those things. And so the Elliott State Forest Advisory Committee brings together a bunch of different groups, um, the environmental community, the timber community, local government, and they keep us all at the table talking about how we can make this forest work for all of us. It's similar to the Blue Mountain Forest Collaborative, which you may have heard about on the east side of the mountains, but it's really the first model that has tried to make progress on the west side of the mountains. And I believe we're making progress. We will know in another couple of months when we report to the state land board. But I think it's a great model for how you solve some of these really difficult issues. So with that, I see that I am almost out of time. Good to you all tonight. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, th th thank you, Midwest. I, you know, I actually, I forgot to mention, uh, you know, we're, uh, uh, Lincoln City Mayor Dick Anderson, he had participated in our uh, our uh, spring uh, candidates forum. And originally when I had contacted him five or six weeks ago, because uh, originally we were gonna have this on uh, actually this Thursday, October 15th, you know, he told me that the League of Women Voters had an event that day. So, so we, we changed it to October 12th. And uh, so, so when I contacted him with the, the new date of October 12th, uh, you know, he, he, told, he told me that that's apparently when the Lincoln City Council also meets though. So, so that's, that's why, uh, uh, Mayor Anderson wasn't able to join us tonight, though. So, uh, anyways, uh, now we're going to be moving into the the Newport uh, races, and uh, so so we have uh, uh, you know the current mayor Dean Sawyer, and then the former mayor Sandra Ramago. And I don't know, one of you wants to uh, go first, or have the other go first, or you want me to flip a coin? Why don't we let beauty go first? Yeah. <laughs> Why, Dean, please go. <laughs> okay, well, Sandra, I guess I, I guess Dean is suggesting you go first then. <laughs> well, I'm uh, Sandy Rumagu, candidate for the mayor of Newport and also an artist. And again, thank you, Martin and Bill for this forum, it's pretty great. And since so many of the questions seem to be kind of interrelated, I'm going to mix and match and uh, use my five minutes that way and hold up a one when I'm getting close. I'm really blabby. <laughs> Recently, um, Sir David Attenborough has been interviewed on the news about his recent film, A Life, of Our, a Life on Our Planet. At age 93, he calls this film a witness and a vision statement. Is it depressing? It is staggering how little time we on planet Earth have to change course. So I believe we need to think globally, but focus on locally, because we need to do <laughs> what we locally can do. Otherwise, we become overwhelmed at the immensity of the problem. Locally now, we need to think regionally, form alliances within the county with other cities and the county and take the steps recommended by science that we can do. One of the steps that the city of Newport has taken is the plastic bag ordinance. But in light of COVID-19, it needs to be revisited to check to see how businesses are coping with the ordinance. A reminder notice to the public might be in order to use or continue using their reusable bags. I support the Lincoln County Climate Action Plan, um, which envisions the goal for the county to become carbon neutral by the year 2035. And I would support an initiative for the citizens of Lincoln County to vote on a referendum to become carbon neutral by 2035. Newport is facing the pressing environmental issue of a safe and adequate water supply for the city and the surrounding area. I'm of course talking about Big Creek Dam. The problem of the water supply encompasses all the geological and climate catastrophes waiting to happen. 
A small earthquake around 3.5 off our coast can destroy the, the dam. The relatively small quake can liqu liquefy the ground underneath the dam, plus start landslides, which will take out everything in their path all the way to the ocean near Agate Beach. And it will basically shut the city down and the region down. And without water, there is no city. Attaining the funding to build this dam or if possible to implement the Rocky Creek Dam solution is earth shaking important. The Big Creek plans for the dam have been reviewed and reviewed over several years by the Newport City Council when I was mayor. So much of the homework has been completed. When I served as mayor, I supported the emergency preparedness coordinator uh, position. Talking really fast um, to create green jobs, a consortium of industry and business, the Small Business Development Center, um, the county, of course, the Lincoln County School District, the college uh, needs to be formed. There is already an example of how this alliance can work with the Port of Toledo, working with Oregon Coast Community College to offer a certificate program in welding and has the student job ready for the prospective employer. When I was an administrator at Oregon Coast Community College in the early years, the program that people wanted first was a nursing program. It is now a major part of the curriculum offered by the college. And then another successful uh, program is the aquarium science. And I do want to miss, if I've got 30 seconds, in the 1970s, when I worked at Lynn Benton Community College, there was a federal program called the Manpower Development and Training Act. And this program paid people who were unemployed to attend LBCC for certificate programs needed by business cities. And the brand new program that was offered was wastewater technician. It was a huge success and certainly needed today. And boy, we could use that particular federal program today. It worked, it was good. We know how to do a lot of these things. We just need to make sure we've got our politicians in line to help us get them. Whew. How many seconds? <laughs> and you got eight more seconds to oh go, Sandra. <laughs> I'll, Any... I'll donate them. <laughs> okay. So, so Dean, uh, you're, you're up next. And let, actually, let, let me set reset my. Okay. I'd like to thank Martin and and um, Bill for all their hard work that they've done to date to work on this the climate change plan for Lincoln County. They've come to City Council several times and educated us and given us presentations. A wonderful job, and we really appreciate all the work that you've done. Um, one, one of the things that I think that we really need to do is extend the climate change partnership to, to get more people involved. I know that it, a lot of people work and, and it's hard, they don't really pay attention to it. But I think if we can expand the public awareness locally of climate change issue, that's really going to affect us all. Um, the other thing is we need to find realistic and workable solutions that we can buy into that don't cause bigger problems from the solutions. Instilling of uh, city and county planning ideas that encourage resource savings, less dependence on limited natural resources. As the city was planning the Big Creek dams uh, in the last two years, we found that just to increase the height of the dam five feet, we would not have to draw 10% of the water rights we have on the Sluts River. If we raise the height, we will not need to take any water from the Sluts in the summer with, with the high demand from fish plants and the hotels. This would increase the uh, salmon run on the Sluts River. So there's things that we can do at the local level in planning to, to make sure that the things that we do uh, at the city level and the county level um, affect climate change, of course. Um, but the wildfires is, is, a, is a huge problem. It's something that, that we really haven't thought about here locally, sadly, because you know it, it, we have so lush for us, but it, has, it hit us hard recently. And I think we need to really um, take some time to, at the state and the federal levels to manage our, all of our forests, including private woodlots. I think we, we need to um, get, let the experts, um, obviously uh, I, I have no idea how to manage a forest, but I think we need to use good science-based planning and management on all of our forest and private woodlots to make sure that they are vibrant and, la and long-lasting 
and don't have these catastrophic fires that we have that we that we've seen here locally. Obviously, we're not um, we're now doing is not taking this into account climate change, and we need more studies of the issue and thoughtful management uh, with the goal of sustainable forest and fire resistant planning. Uh, one of I think the biggest climate change issue we have here locally is fossil fuels. Obviously, that's one of the biggest issues we have, and um, you know, uh, people um, driving. You know, we, we, we're, we're so used to getting in our car and driving 400 miles. And unfortunately, a lot of electric cars aren't there yet, although Dietmar has one that does. But I, I think the problem that we need to do is we, we need to work on this. Um, what, one of the problems is um, that we have seen a, a reduction in the use of, of fossil fuels and gas over the last uh, 10 years or so. And I think a lot of that comes from, you know, the federal government, and the state government has been pushing people to drive less to use alternate sources of, of, of like, like electric cars and so forth and buses and so forth. But I think we need to work a lot harder on this. Uh, one, one of the things that, you know, the, recently the, the governor of California announced that he wants to eliminate 15 million cars there in the next 15 years. Um, that, that's, that's a lofty goals. I just don't know how that's, you know, I hope that works, but I, I want us to find solutions that really work on the ground level. Um, I, I think that um, it, it's, when we can find uh, a, an electric car that costs $1,000 used, that's going to help because, you know, a lot of people in our community have minimum wage jobs and they, they just can't afford the cost of electric cars. Um, a couple of years ago, the Oregon Transportation Commission was um, redoing their whole, their statewide plan. And I, I testified at the, the hearing to the change to make uh, the rebates a tiered plan rather than just across the board. Um, what, the, what the transportation plan did was they, they put a payroll tax on all um, income workers, and that includes minimum wage and those that make you know, millions of dollars a year. But the problem is with the, with the rebates, uh, you know, the average guy that, that works at McDonald's can't afford an electric vehicle. So those rebates are basically um, unrealistic for him. What I testified was, was we need to have this tiered system like if you make over $100,000 a year, you get no rebate. If you make, you know, $30,000 a year, you get a huge rebate. And, and that would encourage more people to use electric cars. Um, I, 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 have, I do support uh, the, the Climate Change Action Plan and the goals for um, to be carbon neutral by 2035. And I, I think that what we need to do is we need to put out a, a a citizen outreach plan like we did with the, the Vision 2040 campaign. Uh, I think that we need to engage everybody. You know, a lot of people work hard. They have families. They don't really think a lot about climate change. And I think we need to put that more on the uh, on the plate for people to understand. And I think that we, we've done a lot. You know, unfortunately, with the recycle uh, industry. Uh, oh, 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 okay, so, so so sorry, Mayor, but I'm sort of being pretty ruthless with okay. <laughs> the time. Right. So thank you. Yeah, not not a problem. So, so, so anyways, uh, Mayor Sawyer suggested, you know, beauty before whatever. So, so anyways, so uh, with, with the four candidates for the Newport City Council, that means the, the females come first. So Beatrice or Cynthia, do one of you want to go first? Cynthia, Beatrice, whoever wants to go first. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Bill and Martin, for setting up this forum. I appreciate it. I'm Cynthia Jacoby, and I am a member of Newport City Council. I would like to share a quote of John Muir with you. When one tugs at a single thing in nature, he finds it attached to the rest of the world. Now, I think we are at a place in time where we can halt our march to climate destruction. And this is led by necessity from cities and states who have stepped up. I fully support the Lincoln County Climate Action Plan with the goal to be carbon neutral by 2035. Now, what can I do specifically as a Newport City Councilor? Under our Vision 2040 plan, B9, to be specific, we have a goal stated, develop comprehensive climate action plan to lessen the area's contribution to climate change. That's the beginning of it. 
So I will advocate and work for that goal to greatly reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. With the political will and education, I believe we can pass a city or city county referendum with a strong climate action. I think climate change and disruption is bad for people, it's bad for our health, and it's bad for business. Surely that can get everyone on board. So every year, our city council engages in a day of goal setting. This is when we set priorities for our work sessions and council actions throughout the year. As a city councilor, I will present these following 10 goals. One, expand the emerging electric highway for vehicles. Two, require the city's new vehicle purchases to be electric or hybrid or high mileage. Three, reduce light pollution and utility costs under the Dark Skies Initiative. This is an item in our work session next Monday and I invite you all to listen in and learn more. Four, expand local programs to retrofit houses with energy and water savings. Five, expand community gardens. Six, expand awareness of reducing food waste. Seven, establish a permanent farmer's market. Eight, plant more trees, and then plant more trees suitable for urban areas to enlarge our carbon sink. Nine, establish a serious water conservation program in Newport. And 10, support the city's goals to purchase watersheds surrounding our reservoir. Now the September wildfires on our central coast were a brutal wake up call, the result of prolonged drought and decades of higher temperatures. Chief Murphy told us the relative humidity during the time of the fires was in the low teens. I think an unheard of number for the Oregon coast. Most of us dealt with the smoke, but we did not experience the terror of the evacuees in North County and in Otis. We dare not become complacent. Wildfire is a huge regional and state tax task. Perhaps pre-planning fire breaks, definitely rethinking forest management is part of the plan going forward. I believe more community conversations such as the one held in Toledo last Monday with all parties present should be encouraged. I think now is the time that we can reimagine living in harmony with our forests, our ocean, with our neighbors and communities in a just and sustainable way for all. We must do better. I know there are workable solutions which can be accepted by the community. I pledge to re-examine my own carbon footprint regularly. And I go forth with the optimism of one who has planted many trees in my lifetime. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, Cynthia. Okay, Beatrice, you're up next. And actually, let me reset my timer. Okay. okay. All set, Beatrice. Hi, okay. everyone. I'm Beatrice Botello, and I'm running for Newport City Council. I was appointed last year, 2019. And um, I wanna say thank you so much, Martin, for inviting us. This is, and also Bill. Um, I had the pleasure to work very close with, with Bill. Uh, we have been initiating working at uh, public gardens and that's a sustainable, um, every community we wanna have public gardens where people can plant their own foods and also integrate conservation. But before I move to, um, to talk about different um, actions that we wanna see, one of the things that I wanna share um, to, move, to move and bring options is very important also to be inclusive and having the inclusion of the community and building that relationship. If, you, if we are building that relationship with our community, we can move things alone, but um, if we don't have that relationship with uh, different members in the community, it's very hard to move uh, some of the projects that we want to see. So 
I feel like communities now we need uh, more kind of diversity um, groups that come and support in the cities and counselors too, uh, providing ideas and open opportunities. And like Cynthia mentioned, you know, having like a, a community meetings where people come and give their ideas. I think it's very important to have those ideas on the table. And then I wanna also say, uh, Joe kind of mentioned about the fires on the, um, he mentioned in Lincoln City. And one of the things that I wanna share uh, about the fires that I feel, you know, is still in my heart for many people. I have a friend who lost their home. And um, something that I wanna say is that plan a communication is very important. Having a communication plan is very important. And um, if we have a plan, a very compressive plan, uh, is the communication and disaster plan. And I also wanna say um, water conservation is one of the other parts. I grew up in a place where we didn't have water. Uh, that was very hard. And I, I'm kind of connecting with Melissa because she talked about the water conservation. It's huge, uh, water conservation. If we have a disaster right now in Newport, we are in a big trouble. Uh, we don't even have tanks, tanks where all deposits of water we haven't talked, we haven't addressed. You know, as an individual person in my house, I don't have a tank of water. I don't have, I mean, I have gallons of water to drink, but um, I haven't, I don't know what I'm going to do if, if I don't have water. Uh, and we are five people. I can sustain my family, maybe my neighbor, but um, you know, when I took uh, the training, uh, the emergency listos training, um, one of the things that we talk is having water to drink water, but we don't have any more than one week supply. So that's, that's one of the things that I wanna work. I wanna work in a very compressive plan uh, about water. And the other part is the public gardening, bringing people together is very important because uh, families and little kids, the education piece, having funding to reserve funding for education, that's, that's I wanna see it more in the cities. They can, we can reserve funding for education. So we talk about how to grow a garden, how to conserve water, early age. Um, as, a, as a community worker, I like to work collectively in these matters. And I wanna continue um, working uh, in the inclusive groups. Uh, please, it's very important that we have a, a diversity group in every community and bring the youth and bring uh, seniors and have everybody engaged in these conversations. I really wanna see to move more forward with this. And I wanna say, Bill, I, I wanna continue working with you and have our dream about public gardens and mapping the city so people can find places to plant gardens. And please vote for me. Yeah, thank you, Beatrice. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so let's see, Dietmar and Ryan, uh, both of you guys are up next, not quite as cute as the women. So either one of you wanna go first? Oh, I'll just pick on Dietmar. So Dietmar, you're up next. Dietmar? Can you, let's see. What did you do? You need to unmute yourself, Dietmar. Well, maybe, maybe we'll go. To, I forgot to okay. unmute myself. So you've okay. got to give me some time back. Yeah, no, I, I haven't even started the clock yet. Okay, you ready? Hold it a second. Okay. Okay. Okay, pressing the button, you're on. Hello, Martin. Um, thanks for putting this form on and uh, allowing us to expect some of our concerns for the future of our city. I'm uh, Dietmar Goebel. I'm uh, running for re-election to the city council. I'm a local architect and business person in the community, and uh, I have a lot of concerns that I would like to express, about five concerns I'd like to express tonight. 
in countless meetings with the Newport community, a plan was developed for navigating the future. This is our vision 2040 and strategic plan. It's a living document and um, it will be an invaluable tool moving forward and should set the stage for action to be taken in the future. So I will look at that as we navigate into our future. Some of the topics I wanna to talk about is water, solid waste. I know Rod is kind of interested in that. I'll like to talk to him about that. Electric vehicles and solid and single use plastics. Again, I see a lot of that coming back into our community. And also uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Lincoln Action Plan. <clears throat> the clean potable drinking water security is one of our biggest challenges moving into the future and key to our survival and growth. Our Big Creek, can, our Big Creek Dam can provide only so much. It can handle our present need, day needs, but de, uh, depending on, by depending on Slets River water in the summertime. But future needs will require more creative and regional solutions. I would also like to look at the ownership of our watershed. Last time I was up there, there was a lot of clear cutting going on and uh, it's critical that we look at that as a, a long range plan and uh, look at our growth over the next 10, uh, 20 years. And our solid waste, <clears throat> uh, there are alternatives to trucking our waste to farm fields in the Slits Valley and other locations in Oregon, which we're doing now. And Rod, maybe this is something that it would interest you. I'm also uh, would like to look at the process of gasification, electric generation systems, which would use that solid waste to, uh, as a fuel and then to, and in our treated water as a, to run turbines and generate electricity. By that being, uh, that, that electricity could then be used to run the sewer plant. This could be, uh, this should be investigated and tested and if feasible, one that would eliminate the need for trucking our waste to our farm fields. And hopefully we can come together on that. Newport and Toledo maybe can come together on that. Electric vehicles and charging stations and renewable alternative energy. I, I committed to uh, electric vehicles some time ago and I drive one now. And it, uh, it's a wonderful way to transport, uh, go around town. Electrical vehicle accommodations, both private and public, begin with installing public Park charging stations with the aim to make electric transportation more accessible, uh, such as the ones that uh, Samaritan Pacific Communities recently installed with their remodel of the remodel, I mean, the, their new hospital. The electric car industry is here to stay. More and more electric cars are traveling our streets and highways each year. As a city, we should set the example and invest in electric vehicle technology. Much of our fleet could be electric, especially those vehicles that never leave town. We need to take the lead and install electric charging stations at our facilities and parking lots. I would also like to see us look into renewable energy to achieve energy independence in the greater Newport area by harnessing a combination of renewable energy sources and technologies. Solar panels, of course, is the obvious one but we could also look at water and wind turbines, which could generate electricity for our public buildings and operations. Again, I mentioned that, uh, that uh, single use plexus is starting to come back. I see a lot of them in our grocery stores again. We can do more to reduce the amount of single use plastic in our household, but with the amount, oh, I'm, I'm down, coming down to, Coming down to my last minute here. So single use plastics uh, is one item that I'd like to really uh, focus on again. And my last point is the action plan. I would support the Lincoln County action plan and carbon neutral by 2035 to lessen the greater Newport area's contribution to climate change, as well as mitigating the impact of climate change on the community itself is necessary and will work with 20, uh, 350 Oregon and the Oregon leader conservation voters to bring this to to the voters. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dietmar. Okay, so next up, uh, Ryan. Let me uh, let me reset my phone. 
and uh cool yeah um my name is brian perry and i'm a candidate for the newport city council um i'd really like to thank all the <clears throat> panelists uh who are here tonight as well as the organizers um it's really nice to see like you know so many municipalities involved and like different levels of government to come together and talk about this really critical issue uh so yeah thank you so much for being here um just briefly i gotta say that there's nothing that i've heard tonight that i really disagree with um you know the the 2035 action plan is critical and thoughtful and important and we needed that yesterday um furthermore you know you know there is really you know as individuals there's really only three things that we can truly do uh to help mitigate climate change um that is travel less have fewer children and eat a plant-based diet and you know obviously you know city county any government really cannot force people to do those things i mean just look at the anti-mask movement that's happened uh this year um so obviously we need to take a soft touch approach to this um, and that means, you know, incentivizing uh, green building practices, um, incentivizing, you know, the installation of, of, of PV and infrastructure to support uh, electric vehicles. You know, there's, there is electric chargers around town here, but they're antiquated by now. I mean, most of them are, are slow and uh, really not up to speed with, with what current electric vehicle technology is. Um, and then it, it goes beyond that, you know, I mean, like, how do we encourage people to eat not only plant based, but just like more locally sourced, um, you know, food goods. And I, I like to turn as an example to the Newport Farmers Market, they have this really nice program, um, the Lemonade Project that has um, essentially the, you know, the those receiving food assistance kind of double their value if they are um, you know, buying locally sourced produce, cheeses and meats and eggs. And you know, city government could do more to supplement that. And I think that that would be a, a really nice step to not only improve county or, and city health, public health, uh, but also to um, you know, reduce the, 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 the extremely harmful effects of, of mass market farming. Um, and so, like I said, yeah, I'm so glad to hear this discussion and, and, you know, dialogue to me is king and we need to have more discussions like this. Um, and so I'm not going to touch on anything real specific here, but I, I will um, just mention one thing that's sort of my pet peeve um, here in Newport and my, my fellow uh, candidates for the Newport City Council have heard me say this before. Um, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at data right now from the Surfrider Foundation's Blue Water Task Force, who uh, go out and measure bacteria levels in our oceans all over the coast. Um, specifically, I pay attention to Agate Beach, Nye Beach, Elizabeth Street, uh, Under the Bridge, and South Beach. <clears throat> uh, Nye Beach pipe, and, and, and keep in mind here, to be considered like high or toxic levels, it only has to be over 130 parts per million. Nye Beach Pipe, 172 parts per million. Nye Beach South, 247 parts per million. Elizabeth Street, 1,421 parts per million. That's fecal chloroforms. That's human waste going into our beaches and our ocean. It's not acceptable and it's embarrassing. You know, I live in Nye Beach and every time I go to the turnaround and I see visiting families with their you know, kids and dogs playing in the creek. I just cringe. The city must do something about this. We need to move money, we need to apply for grants. We need to penalize bad actors because it's, 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 it's not only disgusting, but our beaches and our fisheries form the very backbone of our economy. Um, but that said, you know, uh, <laughs> that's just sort of my, you know, um, personal vendetta or my personal hard feeling. Um, but again, I appreciate this discussion. I really, um, uh, really believe in all of this completely and fully. And um, uh, thanks so much for inviting me. Uh, again, my name is Ryan Perry and
Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so I, I actually, uh, um, the, the, the format was, I was just sort of going by alphabetical order of Newport, then Toledo, then Walport, and Yahat. So, so anyways, next up is Mayor Cross. And so why don't we get you online, Mayor? Okay, the floor the, is yours for the next five minutes. All right, thank you, Martin. And tell Bill, thank you very much for putting this on. I appreciate you inviting me, even though I don't have an opponent in this year's race. Um, so as mayor of Toledo, uh, when you look at the 350 climate action plan, uh, there's one giant thing that sticks out, of course, and that's Georgia Pacific. And that's located in the town where I'm mayor. Um, you know, there are trade-offs to everything in life. And the, the one trade-off that, that we have had the benefit of during this time of COVID is that our economy here in Toledo has not been as affected as the rest of the coast, primarily because uh, Georgia Pacific and our boat works have been able to stay in pretty much full operation. Um, the mill's only been down for two weeks during the entire time. And so that has allowed our city to remain uh, relatively unscathed by the COVID economic crisis uh, directly. Of course, we still suffer indirectly because a lot of our people work in the minimum wage service industry over in Newport. And so we are dealing with those issues here just as well as everyone else is. Um, I wanted to, to touch on some things that we've done here in Toledo that I think can be um, of value to everyone in our county. And one of them is the Mill Creek watershed. Uh, 15 years ago, we recognized the value of our Mill Creek watershed and we put it under professional management uh, as a watershed. That is, that is the whole idea behind our management strategy of it. Uh, we own almost 500 acres of our watershed up there. Uh, one of the things that we have learned is that we can raise that dam up at the Mill Creek uh, Reservoir, we could raise that 10 feet, and then that could work as a backup water source for most of South County and to include Newport. Um, and so working with the Midcoast Water Planning Partnership, uh, that's one of the things down the road that we're trying to, to handle because it helps take, uh, as we've heard earlier, it helps take a lot of the stress off the selects. Um, climate change is real and I'll be blunt, whether you believe in the climate science, I believe in history and history shows me that climate has changed over and over again. So to say this is something new is a fallacy. This is something that has occurred during the, all of recorded history. Um, and so how we deal with it is what's going to matter to our children. Um, I'm blessed to have five sons and I want them to have the same opportunities uh, in the wilderness and, and in our woods and on our waters that I've had growing up here in Oregon. Uh, Toledo has been a tree city USA now. We're going, we are on our 28th year. Uh, we enact and we try to keep as many trees and plant even more trees every year within our city. Uh, we are generating public gardens every year, thanks to Councillor Betty Kamakawa. Uh, she started the program and it's taken off like gangbusters. And finally, I want to talk about two things. One, charging stations. We want to get them in Toledo also. So, um, because the thing that we heard this summer, it's, it's amazing how many people traveled this summer when they weren't supposed to be traveling, um, that there weren't enough charging stations in Newport. And so they started looking around for some. So we're looking at getting some charging stations in Toledo to help alleviate those issues. Uh, also on the biosolids issue, and this is directly to what Dietmar was talking about. We are working on a plan to put in a regional biosolids, um, for lack of a better word, incinerator. It uses water, it doesn't use flame. It's a high temperature water pressure system. Uh, we are trying to uh, become, for lack of a better word, the high-tech test bed for this particular type of equipment. 
we believe that if it is as functional as we believe it to be and as the scientists believe it to be that this could be the the capstone of trying to get our cities counties and other uh, polluting entities into a more clean and green zone uh, and so hopefully we'll have more on that as we go on uh, one of the things that we all have to understand about government is that, oh my God, we are never fast at anything. It seems like we have to have a committee for, to, to do anything. And so we're in committee and we're working at it. Uh, thank you again, Martin. And thank you to all the panelists. It's been very enlightening to listen to this. And I wish you all the best of luck. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Cross. So next up uh, is Walport. So Greg, uh, you want to yeah. unmute yourself and yeah. introduce yourself and I'll turn it over to you now. Okay, my name is Greg Holland. I'm a candidate for the mayor of Walport. I do have an opponent. Unfortunately, she's not going to be here tonight. Um, I attended the Lincoln County Climate Action Plan rollout meeting, and I was so impressed with the uh, presentation. And I'm going to ask, if I'm elected mayor, I'm going to ask in January that you folks come down and uh, give a presentation to the full council. We're a little shorthanded on deck right now. We have a couple empty seats, and we're going to fill those with the next election. So we'll be a full staff after the first of the year because um, I'm, I want Walport to become an active participant in the plan and get on board totally. And I wanna attend more environmental meetings because I think Walport's been lagging a lot in the environmental aspects of the county. And I want us to be more actively involved in it. That's the first part of my ideas. Um, Walport also is having a big problem with affordable housing. so. We've been talking around and decided that we're going to work to form a community development organization, a nonprofit, to try to get some federal and state tax dollars in. And under that, we're going to try to do things like uh, start a business incubator program in which we could get a building and have some businesses start up within the building um, where they'll have free retail space to start up a business and uh, free rental space where these businesses would have 12 to 18 months to start up their business with free rent and, uh, and hopefully get a business off the ground that they could eventually start and move to some other location after that time. And I, we want at least one of those businesses to be totally green. So in other words, they'd have like 12 to 18 months to be a green business of some sort and have their employees working there and uh, become profitable and then move to another location. And the green business would definitely pay higher in the community. It would be non-tourism. It would be a year round business and they'd be permanent positions, hopefully that would last beyond anything that is seasonal like our tourism is around here. So that was another idea we, we've been chatting about here in the city of Walport. I've been on the Walport City Council for 12 years, and I was always moaning and complaining about uh, no public art in Walport. So they said, well, do something about it. So I founded the Walport Arts Group, and it's, it's transformed into the LC Bay Center for the Arts. And now we're moving into finding a home next year. We've actually got a home. And so anyway, we did this, uh, field trip last year to wash to shore in Bandon where they take ocean trash and turn it into uh, to uh, sculptures and things to teach kids about ocean trash. Well, we decided we're gonna do something up here with uh, re uh, non-recyclables, plastics and things like that. Turn them into sculptures to teach the kids. It's better to buy things that can be recycled than this, this uh, plastics that you can't recycle. And, and they'll work with local artists and kids and groups. And uh, so they'll be looking on the shelves to tell them to always choose a product that's recyclable instead of buying this product that's not recyclable or pick products that have less packaging than these products that have so much packaging. 
and then we'll so they'll form sculptures and things like that that can be trans that can be mobile so we can move it around and teach people kids and adults about the joys of picking products that are uh recyclable instead of all this that is amassed that isn't recyclable so it is an art project combined with a project that teaches kids about uh, cutting down on the trash that isn't recyclable anymore. So I just want to say I appreciate anybody out there's support. My name is Greg Holland. I'm running for mayor of Walport, and I thank you guys for putting on this program. And uh, thank you so much, Martin. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Uh, yeah, we, we'd be more than happy to give a presentation to uh, the Walport City Council next year. We, we, we gave a presentation to the to Toledo City Council a couple of weeks ago, and actually next week we're giving a presentation to the Newport City Council. So we're more than happy to give a presentation to the Walport City Council. So so ne ne next up, we uh, turn to Yahat. And so... Um, we, we, we have one of uh, the candidates for Yahat's mayor, uh, Leslie, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correct. I already asked her. So Voller, is that correct? Voller. Voller, Voller. So Leslie, why don't you go ahead? Okay, so I am currently on the Yahat City Council. And as uh, Martin mentioned, I'm running for mayor. Um, we've... Um, been moving southward in our county. We've been moving downward alphabetically. We've also been moving to the smallest of the communities in our um, town. I may be one of, well, I think it is probably one of the most um, environmentally engaged towns within it. Um, and I mean, part of it is the setting, although I'm not downplaying anyone else's setting in here. And the beauty that um, draws so many of our citizens who are retirees and um, well, we wanna protect what we move there for <laughs> in terms of the beauty. There's another feature of our town that's come over the last 12 years or so that I think is relevant to this. And that is we've forged um, a real friendship with some of the tribal people. Um, it's evidenced in our peace hike each year. And I think that a number of the people of the community have taken to heart some of the messages we've learned from our tribals people history and their viewpoints. So for those of you who don't know, um, their um, Yahats was um, the site of a certain number of atrocities towards tribal people who were ultimately driven from our, the lands, those who were fortunate enough to survive. Um, and um, when you hear that, I think you know you're not entitled to the land. It's your responsibility to bring it forward, to um, do what our Native people do, to think of the future generations in here. And so I think that that's an underlying rhythm of our town. Um, like everyone else, of course, we have um, water issues that we need to consider, the view shed, the watershed are all very important things. I'm not going to talk at length about that. We're very fortunate that we have View the Future, which is a nonprofit in our um, community, which um, I believe we need to partner very much with um, to try and attack, well, to make progress on some of these things. I wanted to take just a moment and highlight a couple of modest little projects that our city has been able to work on recently. Um, we um, are in the process of taking over um, Ocean View Drive from the county. It's been a county road. It will become a city road. And in the process, we um, were very concerned about the traffic along the bluff and there's erosion. And so we've made it a one-way um, road from for a few blocks there into the um, state park. Another project that we've done is we um, have at the heart of our community, our commons, which is an old 1920s era um, school and it needed a new heating system. The previous heating system put in place in 2012 had been a series of mini splits. They only lasted, well, eight years. 
And so we put together, or our facilities coordinator came up with a commercial, and I put down the name so we'll get it right, variable refrigerate and flow system. Um, and we're told that that's going to um, decrease our carbon footprint each year by 1,240 pounds, which for a little town is a nice little step. And it's certainly the philosophy I would like to see in all of our um, projects going forward of looking for ways that we can make our impact. I also think that we want to look at ways that we can make impact um, person by person. It's very much in the, for some of you probably have heard of the um, Count uh, Us In project, which is an international project of doing something. Don't tell people exactly what one thing they have to do. One thing I did recently is I um, made my campaign signs out of repurposed plywood because I didn't want to add to the um, waste in our community. Um, I'll end by saying that I think there's a lot of building going on in our county. I think as a city, I think um, probably other municipalities could do well to look at putting in a pack together packets of um, um, energy saving, environmentally friendly building practices. We built our house that was, there was nothing like that we got in the packet and that would be a good thing for us to have. So thank you everybody. I've really enjoyed listening to you. Yeah, th th thank you, Leslie, very much. Um, I, uh, I just sort of looking at this, the screen, we, we have Don Keller. So Don, is, is your video working? And then, then we also have Kathleen James and I, I'm wondering if that's-, that's Jim Took. Uh, okay, so that's Jim. Okay, yeah. So um, I know if we, if we want to go alphabetical, uh, so that that would be say Max. Do do, do you want to go first? Uh, we'll turn this over to you. Let me uh, let me get my. Okay, so you all set, Max. I'm unmuted. Okay. Uh, thank you for putting this together. I think it's a uh, it's a real uh, next step since our county and communities have worked together in dealing with the uh, virus pandemic. It was a real joy to work together with other communities and other councils on those. And so I think this is a, a natural uh, next step to deal with the environment, which is a real priority. Priorities for me are uh, uh, clean water, drinking water supply, and getting uh, uh, ownership, control and ownership of our watershed, that's, that's a biggie. I'm also feel that we need to develop a comprehensive climate action plan for the city in coordination with the county uh, and other, other cities. Uh, a, a third priority for me would be to help sequester uh, carbon. I'm also, as uh, Leslie mentioned, we have been doing it quite a bit and I wanna see us continue doing uh, many of the things that, that we are doing. We have as a policy, a seventh generation thinking uh, as we look at our goals and everything. I wanna see that in our, our commons building, we've got fragrance free uh, required requirements for everyone that uses the commons. Uh, we also, are not, it makes it a policy to not use uh, pesticides on city owned properties. And then we participated uh, in the uh, in both endorsement and putting financial support in the public display uh, of the, uh, uh, well, no, of the, uh, what was it, the uh, polluter uh, poll uh, pollen pollinator uh, protection corridor on Highway 101. We, we participated in that. And so one of the things that I want to see is to develop uh, diversity uh, in our community and to, to develop that, that kind of diversity uh, beyond tourism, we need to get broadband. So I want to see broadband brought in. So those are some of my concerns. And uh, I'm running for re-election to the Yaha City Council. And as I think about environment, I remember in Buffalo, New York, I had a, 
uh, hour long live call in TV program, uh, community alert issues and answers. I had a young housewife uh, who had a young child uh, on the program and she talked about uh, her child having some unusual health problems. This was Lois Gibbs, anyone involved in environmental issues and activism knows Lois Gibbs. And so uh, Lois Gibbs was on that program and talked about how uh, the uh, uh, hooker chemical had filled in Love Canal and uh, the chemical and her neighbor walking in his backyard barefoot was blistered. I moved from Buffalo back home to Oklahoma and I learned about Karen Silkwood and, and all that was happening with, the, uh, uh, with that. And then I, I wound up living in Anniston, Alabama where Monsanto poisoned the city and particularly the uh, low income and uh, black neighborhoods. And so uh, I've been involved and seen all of that. So uh, environment is a, is a high priority for me. So thank you for putting this together. And I look forward to uh, inviting you to come down to be with our council and to learn more about the county plan and how we can dovetail that with our own plan. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Max. Yeah, I mean, to, to the Yahat City Council, yeah, we'd be more than happy to come down and uh, talk, talk with you, uh, give a presentation. Uh, so so let's see, going alphabetically, I think Don, I think you're up next, Don. So um, why don't we, uh, why don't we, are you all set to go, Don? Yeah, yeah. okay. So I'm gonna turn this over to you now. So go ahead, Don. I'm Don Keller. And um, I live in Yahats, and I've been an environmentalist for a long time. Um, uh, but it, it's been a lot more fun since I got to Yahats. Um, there are so many things uh, to do here um, to help the environment. And um, my husband does more than I do, but we both do quite a bit. And we've done everything from planting um, uh, trees at the state nursery at Beaver Creek, um, which is really fun because you get to actually go out and collect the seeds for things sometimes and then grow the trees and then plant them on the banks of a river someplace so that there's going to be shade for fish to spawn and things like that. And, um, and it's, I, it's one of those things where I just feel like um, everybody who is capable of going out and doing that should be able to have that kind of hands-on approach to knowing that what they're doing is making, you know, a bit of difference. And um, it's hard work uh, to get out in all that muck and riverbank stuff sometimes, but it's really, really worth it. And I feel like we need to be um, advertising you know, sometimes in our towns, we just get stuck in our towns and we forget that there are amazing volunteer opportunities all over the place. You know, there's the whole throw the Christmas trees in so that, you know, the fish can can have habitat and rebuilding, putting things in for to re um, reestablish the beaver population here. And that's all around us all the time. And there's, um, I think that Yahats really, um, because our, of course, our, our main industry is tourism, we really ought to hook up with, you know, counting the marbled murrelets and doing, going over to Beaver Creek, having tourists actually have those kinds of experiences, because I think people are going to, um, Everybody that I have talked to as, I, as I'm campaigning for city council, they're just waiting for us to implement this climate action plan because they want to get to work on this. We're already, we kind of had a stall during COVID and during, um, you know, the, the current administration is not very kind to, uh, <laughs> um, to, uh, promoting um, environmental causes, but people are ready. They are serious about this. And 
it doesn't really matter whether they are, um, it, their age doesn't matter, their capabilities don't matter, they'll find something to work on this because they are ready to go. And so I find that that is just so encouraging. And, you know, there, and I just think we have a great potential in Yahats for creating a culture where everything we do from, you know, the kinds of takeout boxes we have in our, in our restaurants to, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that want to have a food co-op and we could actually have one here where we grew a lot of this stuff right here ourselves and, um, and sold it at the co-op. And I think that's really uh, great. So the other thing I just want to say is I think we really need to look at a transit system on the 101 and with shuttles and everything else in the summer. And, uh, and that would not just be for the ease of getting the tourists around to the different locations. It would be, we have a lot of people in our community who don't have enough money to get a car. And if, they, if you can't drive in Yahats, you can't get a job anywhere else. So we need to clean that up and make it green. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Don. Um, so let's see. Uh, so I think Greg Scott, you're up next. So looks like you're all unmuted. And well, let me reset my clock. And okay, you all set, Greg? Okay, um, I'm Greg Scott. I'm running for the Yahat City Council. I, I believe past deeds are a better predictor of future behavior. So rather than general statements or promises about the future, um, I have to share, I wanna share the following statements about things I've been doing for more than 20 years as a private citizen or participating in the Yahat City Council. Um, I've served as a board member for a local nonprofit called You the Future. It's an environmental group for about 10 years working on forest protection um, and environmental objectives. I've served as a Yahas council member for 11 and a half years. And in that capacity voted to participate in the marine reserve discussion that we had some time ago and a marine protected area next to our village. I voted to establish a public charging station on city property for electric vehicles. Spent several Thanks. years trying to halt and later mitigate uh, tree harvesting on the city's watershed work to help clarify which plants are noxious weeds in our city code, voted for a burning ban in Yahats because people have a right to clean air. During our Highway 101 improvement, I recommended LED lighting for the streets for low power consumption and designed to minimize light pollution. This put the area, the idea of dark sky certification on local radar, which I really support. I actively supported the efforts of a local inventor who's developed a new concept in wind power electrical generation. This is still a work in process, but holds considerable promise because it addresses many problems with other wind systems by eliminating problems with bird strikes, noise, and is well suited for installation in urban areas. As a Yahats council member, I was opposed to spraying on our watershed after the timber was cut, but we were unable to stop that uh, stop that spraying. I still think it's a bad idea. As a Yahats Planning Commission member for two and a half years, I worked to include language in our code to protect the Yahats River riparian area. As a private citizen, I spent several years actively pulling Scotch broom and English ivy in and around Yahats. Big problem, Scotch broom. Um, I lobbied our subdivision board for several years to restore and protect the river riparian area in our subdivision. I live on the river and uh, I look at it every day. And I both planted trees and removed invasive plants. We bought a Prius in 2009 and the model I drive today averages over 150 miles per gallon. Uh, because most of our driving is local, doesn't require gas. We can also charge the car off 110 powers uh, voltage um, for about five hours, which is adequate for local trips. As a private citizen, I've practiced environmental principles every day. 
I am a Vietnam Agent Orange survivor. Sound environmental practices isn't just a good idea. For me, it's deeply personal. Martin and Bill, thank you very much for hosting this forum. I'll cede my remaining time to somebody else. Thank you. I actually got two more minutes, Greg, if you want it. Don't need it, Martin. I think uh, don't don't have anything more to say. Uh, I've been a council member for many years. I know the job. Um, I, I do think the city is missing something of a historical perspective and needs somebody on the council with, um, I have, I have a, an accounting degree and I have a background in municipal finance. So I bring those skills. Um, anybody that wants to know more about me can look at my website. It's www.election yahats.me. That's www.election.yahats.me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Greg. And so, so the last person is uh, Jim Took, and I understand. Uh, can you bring your video on? No, I've, yeah. uh, I've been unable to bring, get the video to work. I've tried. Okay. Okay. Well, we, yeah, we, we we got your audio. So. <laughs> well, somebody said you didn't even submit a picture for the. Uh, voter pamphlet, so I guess it's appropriate that you can't see me on the video. Oh. Maybe that's why. Uh, I'm currently a member of the Ohio City Council. I am running for re-election to the council. Uh, I have on the council probably the most uh, meaningful thing I've done has been involved with the Midcoast Water Planning Project uh, for the last four years, uh, trying to help that get uh, move along towards uh, some kind of a deliverable that we can give to the Oregon Water Resources Department for them to present to uh, the legislature at some point in the future. Uh, that's a critical issue, I think, for Lincoln County. Uh, it was originally uh, the idea for creating the Mid-Coast Water Planning Project was originally uh, funded largely by the city of Newport. And the city of Newport wisely decided to bring the whole county into the process. In other words, to have the whole county from Lincoln City to Yahats involved in the process. It's a very extensive, a very, uh, uh, thorough attempt to understand where the water comes from, who's using the water, not just in terms of industrial users or uh, commercial users, but individual homeowners, uh, people with wells and things along those lines. Uh, the, in the time I've been in Yahats, the fact is that we've had two drought restrictions here in Yahats where we had to restrict use of water by local residents. Uh, that was surprising to me because, you know, I like a lot of people thought that uh, it rained on the coast all the time. Our water, our rainfall is drastically dropped in the last few years. I believe this year we're looking around uh, 30 some inches of rain, where at, uh, in the past we'd be up to 50 to 60 inches of rain. So our rainfall uh, totals are way below normal, have been for some time. So I think that's a critical issue. One of the issues we were trying to figure out here in Yachts is how we can uh, get a hold of some uh, properties and also maybe increase our storage capacity. But also through the Midcoast Water Planning Project, the more practical thing is to increase the uh, resilience in the uh, system uh, being allowed to, so that we can share water from other districts when we have inadequate supplies and vice versa. So that's important. I think probably one of the most important things for your huts. Uh, one thing about Yachts that impressed me when I first got here was the fact that Yachts is one of the few towns in the state of Oregon that has a sales tax. And why do we have a sales tax? Well, I wasn't here when it was passed, but my understanding was in 2007 or thereabouts, uh, the Yachts was informed that they could no longer issue building permits until they increased the capacity or re, uh, refurbished their wastewater treatment plant. So they, uh, the citizens and the leaders decided how we're we going to pay for the bond issues to fund this construction. And they came up with the idea that we would have a proposed a sales tax on food and beverages in our restaurants, a 5% sales tax. And believe it or not, that has actually passed by the uh, citizens of Yahats. And that's allowed us to do the financing for that wastewater treatment plant. I think that's a lesson possibly for other communities in the state and in Lincoln County. I like to say, and I think I made mention this to Rod uh, when I was uh, worked with them on the Midcoast Water planning project, uh, you should never let a crisis go to waste. And the point is, I try to, when I talk to people as individuals, I say, you know, there's probably nothing more important than having adequate water and, of course, wastewater treatment. And uh, we 
my point is always to them, I said, you may, you may have a beautiful house on the ocean, but if you wake up one day and you turn on the tap and there is no water, well, it somewhat impacts the value of your property. So if people truly care about the value of their property, that's important. And also, I think we're looking at the situation that we, we're going to have a restriction on the amount, number of building permits we can issue in the future if we don't solve the problem with water. Uh, the other issues that are interesting to me right now, and I know uh, lots of stuff going on in the world, climate change, I think, is the greatest threat we face, not just in Lincoln County, but on a global scale. Uh, there's a book I'm reading right now that I recommend everybody get a hold of. This will scare the bejesus out of you. It's called The Uninhabitable Earth, Life After Warming by David Wallace Wells. A very interesting book, a book that really opens your eyes and makes you think about the crisis we may be facing. And Sandra Rumigo uh, uh, had mentioned the uh, Netflix has a couple of uh, documentaries, the one by David Attenborough, A Life on Our Planet. Highly recommend that you watch that if you can or are able, able to or have Netflix. In fact, I'm going to try to get a hold of the producers of that documentary and see if I can bring that film to Yahats to uh, show in the comments for those people that don't have access to Netflix. And the other one is a, a, another documentary called Kiss the Ground. Uh, it's narrated by Woody Harrelson. It deals with soil restoration and things like that. So I, the reason I bring those up, because once you read The Uninhabitable Earth, you'll want to try to find something that's a little, has at least a certain amount of positivity to it. So there's things that we can do. There's things that we can change. Um, if you look at, the, when we look at buying watershed and looking at getting hold of our watershed, I think we have to look at uh, probably the only way we're going to be able to do that is look at the community forest model. And I think we should, uh, everybody should concentrate on working with uh, NGOs and non-governmental well, non organizations to try to buy private uh, forest lands that surround our communities, to buy from the current owners at some kind close to market uh, prices so that we can, in fact, get a hold of those watersheds. Uh, we have to, we can say we want to get a hold of watersheds, but we got to have some way to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, I can't, I can't, uh, uh, show, show, by, show, show, by, <laughs> but anyway, so, anyway, so, your, your, your time, time is, is uh, uh, okay, so, no problem. So, so anyways, uh, pre appreciate, uh, all of the audience showing up, appreciate all of the, uh, panelists showing up, uh, the, the, this event is recorded and, uh, and I'll post it to YouTube uh, either tomorrow or the next day and I'll, I'll send each of the panelists out a link to the, uh, to the recording and you can send it on to your supporters. So, so anyways, uh, I appreciate everyone staying within the, within the time limits and everything and uh, really enjoyed the conversations and uh, and there, there was a number of good chat comments. I didn't really have much time to look at those. But anyways, thank you, everybody. And with that, uh, just encourage everyone to vote, which I'm sure all everyone here is going to vote. So thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Martin. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Bye. Thank you, Martin. Bye now. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay.